My friends, I want to tell you what happened to Enoch. I'm sure most of you have always asked themselves, what really happened to Enoch? How did he go to heaven? And uh, if he really went to heaven, how was it like? And what does it mean to us? Now, my friends, I want to tell you that uh, Enoch, uh, his life is the ultimate goal of every believer. And what this means is that um, we understand that the account of Enoch's walk with God in Genesis is a powerful representation of the believer's spiritual journey. The Bible says in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 5 verse 24, the Bible says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. You may be wondering, how did God take him? Where did he go? And how was it like? You see, this verse basically shows us Enoch's deep, intimate relationship with God. So much so that God took him. And Enoch's life is an illustration of how God, uh, how a believer grows spiritually. And uh, after growing spiritually, he becomes more aligned with God to a point that he des the desires and the nature of the flesh are no longer dominant. Now, I want to break this down to you so that I may be able to show you how Enoch walked with God to a point that the fleshly Enoch was no more. He was purely, purely the spiritualized man. And that's why the Bible says, and he was no more. <laughs> you could just put a comma, man. Walking with God, let me talk about walking with God. What actually happens? Now, here's where the journey begins. The phrase walked with God indicates a daily ongoing relationship and fellowship with God. For a believer, this journey be begins with faith. And in the book of Hebrews 11 from verse 5 to 6, the Bible says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. You hear those words? Translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you see the point there? So faith is the foundation of a believer's walk with God. And in Enoch's life, uh, the Bible testifies that as we walk in faith, seeking God diligently, we begin to please him. So this is exactly what Enoch did. He walked with God, seeking him diligently, and he started pleasing God, experiencing deeper communion with him. Now, let's see something else which Enoch did, which is called the renewing of the mind that is becoming more like Christ. So you understand that as we walk with God, we experience the transformation of our minds and our hearts. And we become more like Christ and less dominated by the flesh. And this one is well described in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2, which says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God, which is perfect, definitely. So Enoch's work signifies a life lived, not in conformity to the world, all right, or the flesh, but in alignment with God's will. Because believers, for believers, this transformation leads to shedding the desires of the flesh and embracing the spiritual nature of Christ. And that is something that Enoch did. Now, let's talk about dying to the flesh because the old man is no more. Enoch was no more, all right? Do <laughs> you get the point? For, for us as believers, when we walk with God, the old man, the old sinful man is put to death and the new man in Christ emerges. And the Apostle Paul told us this in the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 where the Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. You see, it is not I who is alive, but Christ living in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me gave himself for me. You see here the fleshly man who 
who is a sinful nature of man is no longer in control. Just like Enoch, the one who was not, Enoch walked with God until he was not the Enoch, the fleshly man Enoch, he was no more because God took him. The believer's old nature becomes no more. Just as Christ takes over, the old person is gone and the believer lives by faith with Christ living in him. Do you see now how Enoch was no more? The Enoch man was no more. It is the spiritual man who was left. Let's talk about oneness with God because when he was no more in the flesh, then what happens? You see now, to be one with God, you have to be one spirit with the Lord. And the ultimate goal of the believer's walk with God is to be one with him. And when you look at Enoch translation into heaven without seeing death, points to a believer's ultimate unity with God, where the spirit reigns and the flesh is no longer a hindrance. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Are you joined to the Lord? You become one spirit. There is only one spirit and you become that one. In this oneness, the believer experiences the fullness of God's presence and the desires of the flesh are subdued completely. And uh, the other thing is endurance in the walk, pressing towards the goal. You understand finally, as Enoch continued to walk with God until he was no more, believers are also encouraged to peace, uh, persevere in their walk until they reach spiritual maturity and complete union with God. The book of Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14, the Bible says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the price of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. That is what Paul is saying. Pressing forward is the daily dying to self and growing in the knowledge of God and becoming one with him. So in conclusion, how can we conclude this? Enoch's walk with God is a profound symbol of the believer's journey of faith, the transformation and the union with God. Just as Enoch was no more because God took him as well, the believer's fleshly nature fades away just as Christ takes over, resulting in the believer becoming one with God and in spirit, and ultimately living a life that pleases God. Are you a modern day Enoch? And are you going to walk with God until your fleshly man is no more? 